Hello everyone. Um, this is Ben Amsaremi from uh, CJ Europe. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, how to choose the right arginine source for your broilers. In this slide you see uh, the content of this presentation. Um, it's about uh, arginine recommendations, the bioavailability of different arginine sources, and the extra benefits of arginine. What you see in this slide is um, that uh, arginine is a key amino acid, um, and as you can see, it is involved in different metabolic pathways. So it is related to energy metabolism, to protein synthesis, uh, to body fat deposition and to regulation of blood flow. So that's why arginine is a key amino acid. It is also an essential amino acid in poultry, so it is important to meet its requirement appropriately. In the next slide, you see um, a list of different recommendations in terms of arginine, uh, most of them relatively old. Uh, but I just want to emphasize here that uh, in terms of recommendation, we have really a range of recommendations around 105 to 126, depending on what literature you're referring to. Uh, breeder companies are recommending around 105 and we're recommending around 105 to 108 percent of arginine to lysine ratio. Um, that's why in 2015 when um, CJ Bio brought arginine to the market as a registered feed additive, so we decided to run a first arginine requirement study and that's what you see in this slide. Um, and as you can see, uh, to meet the optimum uh, performance in terms of body weight, feed conversion ratio and breast meat, yield, um, we determined in this trial that 115% of arginine to lysine ratio would be required. It is at that time in 2015, uh, of course, the industry was even not close to this number, so it was quite difficult for many people to understand why we are recommending this high arginine to lysine ratios, but I will show you by time this data has been repeated itself uh, quite considerably. Um, two years ago, we also did a cooperation with Aviagen and University of Auburn, where we looked into arginine to lysine recommendations for row 708 male broilers. And in this trial, uh, we found out that, uh, for example, in this case, you see for in terms of FCR, um, uh, like an average um, and arginine to lysine ratios of 111% uh, was discovered. Uh, and it was also requirement for increased by age. So you see that the numbers from 1 to 14 to 1 to 25 a little bit lower than the recommendations from day 25 to 42 days. In the next slide, you see that in the same experiment, we also looked into uh, care cast parameters. We looked into different ages of the animals. And on average, we found out that the arginine to lysine ratios of these broilers are on average around 122%. But of course, Depend, depending on what parameter you want to optimize, you might have a different um, requirement. Uh, and that's what, for example, you see to optimize breast meat, you need 112 percent to optimize, uh, for example, body weight gain at later ages from 25 to 42 days, you need around 129 percent. In the next slide, I'm also showing you the newest data of CJ Bio. So we 
very recently run another trial to look into origin requirement of the animals compared to the recommendations of Aviagen in 2019 for ROS 308. In this slide, you see that the recommendation is somewhere around 137% in the starter phase, and the grower is around 1.23%, uh, and the finisher phase is around 1.13%. So in order to look into requirement, we reduced, uh, we created a basal diet deficient in arginine and we reduced uh, arginine content of the diet to 1.02, 0.88 and 0.75 in the starter, grower and finisher uh, phases respectively. Um, and then of course, um, the greater levels of arginine was added and in the next slide you see uh, that we um, had a very nice response of the animals in terms of carcass weight, breast weight, body weight, and FCR. So the birds responded to, to, to the greater levels of arginine. Uh, we used different models to look what model actually better fit to our data. And then using the best fitted model, uh, we calculated the arginine requirement. And that's what you see in the next slide. Um, you see on the left side, ROS 308 recommendations at 2009, um, and beside that, you see um, the SID arginine requirement based on our trial. So for the starter phase, we uh, came to a number of 1.47% SID arginine in the grower 1.41, and in the finisher phase, 1.13%. Um, so this was not a ratio study, however, we uh, took uh, the SID lysine levels that we used in this uh, test, uh, that's what you see in the next column, um, and then we calculated an arginine to lysine ratio, and you see that on average, uh, we came up with 116% arginine to lysine ratio, uh, which is, of course, a range of 115 to 110 to 123 percent, depending to, to the age of the animals. But all of these data are pointing to one fact, and that's uh, uh, the fact that arginine requirement of the animals are higher than what we were uh, thinking uh, in the past. Now I move to the next part of my presentation, which is about bioavailability of different arginine sources, because we are also dealing uh, with products which um, are available on the market and they are claiming arginine sparing effects. And that's what you see in this schematic, uh, which shows a relationship between kidney, liver, and muscle in the animals. So from left to right, you see that in the kidney, uh, and arginine and glycine, they are bound together using an enzyme called AGAT, and then a molecule called guanidine acetic acid is produced. Uh, GAA then moves to the liver, where using methionine, it is methylated to creatine, and then the creatine goes to the muscle, where it is getting involved in the energy metabolism. So... Uh, by adding GAA into the feed, you get a load of GAA into the liver, which is the central part of this schematic. And um, every GAA that gets into the liver would be uh, methylated uh, using a methionine molecule, and then uh, you get an increase in the creatine concentration in the muscle, and that would send a negative feedback to kidney where this AGAT enzyme is active so the activity of the enzyme goes down so there will be no more arginine used for the synthesis of GAA and that's why uh, it is claimed that adding GAA to the diet of broilers would spare that arginine in the kidney uh, for other activities and we need now to um, see how much actually this uh, uh, arginine sparing effect is and that's what you see in the next slide um, which is a publication from illinois university from 2013 
where from left to right you see a basal diet deficient in arginine and then you add 1% of arginine on top and you create a positive response in terms of weight gain. And then the researchers started to add greater levels of GAA from 0.6% up to 0.78%. And what you see in this study is that uh, 0.06% doesn't create a significant difference compared to the basal diet. Uh, at 0.12% you get a response. Uh, but it is not matching to the response which was created by arginine. The blue columns shows if there is any uh, mutual effects of arginine and GAA. If you add GAA on top of a diet which has already 1% arginine, uh, doesn't create any extra benefits. If you do the same thing adding creatine on top of a diet which has already arginine in it, it's also not creating any additional benefits. Uh, which shows actually that if you want to meet arginine requirement of the animals, uh, the easiest way and the best performance is always created using um, arginine and not uh, guanidine acetic acid. Same group uh, created a dose response trial using subgraded levels of arginine on top of two basal diets, one having no GAA and the other one having 0.12% GAA in it. And you see, uh, for example, on the left side, weight gain of the animals. Um, when you are at a very deficient arginine levels, having a base diet which has 0.12% GAA would create uh, an additional weight gain. And as soon as you get somewhere which is close to arginine requirement, and that's the right of the graph, you see that the difference is disappeared. And then they also calculated the arginine um, optimum total arginine requirement of these animals. And you see that there is not a big difference between uh, the two groups, no supplemental GAA or 0.12% supplemental GAA, they are very, very close. Um, and on the right side, you see the same scenario for gain to feed ratio. Again, when you are at a very deficient condition, there is a difference. And as soon as you get to arginine requirement, um, you don't see uh, a difference. And that's the conclusion that GAA would create a certain amount of arginine sparing when you are in very deficient um, arginine conditions and as soon as you come somewhere close to uh, commercial situations which is close to arginine requirement then these uh, benefits are getting disappeared. Uh, in the next slide you see also a very nice study where researchers they looked into the metabolism of GAA and uh, you see if you have 0 GAA or 0 0.6 or 6 gram per kilogram of GAA in the feed, uh, those uh, different metabolites would, uh, uh, would vary. Uh, so their metabolism is varying. That's uh, what you see here, for example, by adding, um, I mean, there is anyway creatinine excretion by, by adding GAA at 0 0.6 or 6 gram per kilogram, you would increase the creatinine excretion dramatically, you would also increase GAA uh, excretion dramatically. <coughs> and based on that, um, these uh, researchers, they calculated a true availability uh, of GAA, which is considered at 83% at the recommended dose. And if you go 10 times higher, then the true availability goes down. Uh, if you include also the amount of creatinine which is excreted uh, per day, so the true availability including all the metabolites then would be at 76%. And if you increase uh, the dosage, then your availability will go down to very low number around 45%. Uh, which is showing that actually all the GAA that we put into the feed is not necessarily ending uh, into something positive. So the animal has to make some effort to get rid of extra GAA and creatinine, which is um, caused 
by the mean of yeah bypassing the normal metabolism of animal adding uh, GAA which is an intermediary metabolite into the feed and that's uh, causing that the animal needs to get rid of um, all the additional GAA and creatinine which is created in the muscle tissue so to look at um, the real bioavailability the data that I'm showing you in these uh, next slides is um, a trial that we did for the first time, it's going to be published and that's the first time where people looked into the real bioavailability uh, of, of GAA compared to arginine. So as usual, we used a, a deficient arginine diet and on top of that, we uh, added greater levels of arginine and comparable dosages of, of GAA to see how these two uh, molecules would uh, uh, would behave when they are fed comparably to, to, to the broilers. And in the next slide, you see the results of daily weight gain. So on the top left, you see daily weight gain from day 0 to 10, and then 10 to 12, 24, and then from day 24 to 35. And on the bottom, you see on the left side for the whole uh, growth phase. What is very clear is that um, the GAA response, which is the blue line or the green line, is uh, by no mean uh, catching up the response which is created with, with arginine. And um, I think this is also quite novel because here we are looking separately in the starter chickens and it shows that the starter uh, phase, in the starter phase, chickens are not getting any additional benefit from uh, GAA. Uh, what is also nice to see here that, of course, with GAA, you come to a maximum uh, response. And then if you continue increasing GAA, you would have a negative impact on the performance. And with the higher dosages of uh, GAA, you would go even to performance results, which are even lower than the arginine deficient diet, uh, which shows how critically uh, this molecule should be considered when it is fed to uh, to, 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 to the animals. Um, we also calculated an efficacy. It's not easy because you have two different type of uh, graphs here which you need to compare. So what we did was to determine the maximum response that you would create using GAA and then the comparable dose of arginine which will create the similar response in terms of uh, body weight, uh, daily weight gain, for example, in this case. And uh, what you see in the table, which is highlighted in yellow, uh, shows that the bioavailability of GAA would be somewhere around 44 to 84% in terms of body weight gain. And for the whole growth phase, it's uh, 57. When you look into daily feed intake, it's similar uh, um, scenario. So very critical in the starter phase of the animals. The birds started to linearly uh, decrease their feed intake when they were uh, receiving GAA. Um, so there was no another possibility to calculate an efficacy for the starter birds because um, yeah, apparently starter birds have problem to deal with GAA. But for the next phases, of course, you see that by time the animals get used to, so they increase their feed intake by adding uh, GAA with arginine is uh, anyway improved um, feed intake. So we calculated the efficacy. You see that, uh, for example, for the whole growth phase, we landed at 44% efficacy of GAA. Um, next slide is about feed conversion ratio. So when you look at feed conversion ratio, uh, it's, of course, a ratio between daily weight gain and daily feed intake. So if you have, uh, so there you have to be careful because if you have a molecule which is actually improving feed intake and um, uh, weight gain, so the impact on this calculated FCR is, uh, you know, would be no impact. But at the end of the day, you have to also look into individual parameters like daily weight gain and feed intake. However, we run the same uh, thing, same scenarios, and we landed into numbers from 50 to 102 percent on average for the whole growth phase, 78 percent of efficacy for GAA.
Slaughter parameters, uh, we slaughtered many chickens here to be as accurate as possible um, because slaughter parameters are normally important for uh, poultry industry and you see that we are landing in numbers around 50 uh, plus and that shows uh, that on average um, the efficacy of GAA based on our trial was uh, on average 50% and not the 77 to 149% which is claimed uh, by the suppliers. And the next and last part of this presentation is about extra benefits of arginine, where in this slide I'm showing you the very new data published last year by CG Bio. You see that we fed graded levels of arginine, uh, different levels of arginine to lysine ratio from 94% to 124%. And of course, we looked in, in two trials, looked into births of 0 to 21 days and from 22 to 44 days. Um, as you can see in this table, there was a linear response to extra arginine uh, in a diet. So you increase arginine to lysine ratio, you linearly increase uh, the body weight, body weight gain, you linearly reduce uh, feed conversion ratio um, as you normally expect it. Um, however, in this study, we also looked into creatine content in the muscle and the serum. And uh, it was interesting to see um, that the creatine content in the serum and muscle tissue would also linearly increasing, which shows uh, that if there is an extra benefit of having uh, um, more creatine content, uh, in, in the muscle tissue and having a positive impact on the energy metabolism, you can also create it by meeting uh, arginine requirements of your animals uh, properly. And the difference um, in this trial compared, to, for example, to add GAA is that um, when you add arginine, the animal decides by itself how much creatine in the muscle uh, would be needed and would be synthesized. If you add GAA, you're bypassing the regulatory mechanisms around amount of carotene which are needed in the muscle. And that difference is critical. So I would rather recommend to play around arginine and let the animals decide uh, they have arginine available and how much really carotene would need if there is an extra carotene need in the muscle. So there will be then extra carotene going into the muscle tissue. In this study, we looked also into skin thickness and skin strength, and you see that by adding arginine, you also improve those factors. So there are actually, by adding arginine, a lot of extra or beyond performance uh, benefits, which one can, um, uh, can benefit from that, and that's why we are recommending um, arginine uh, optimum levels to be met in the diets of broilers to our customers. So take home messages from this presentation. Please revisit the arginine specifications of your feed formulas. We are still believing that arginine to lysine ratios of 115% would be adequate. Of course, you can go and depending on the targets of your um, production, you can go to higher numbers. For example, if you want to have breast meat optimization or carcass yield optimization, you can go higher, but 115% for us is uh, the golden number which needs to be met uh, in the diets. I hope from this data that I showed you, you see that the best way to meet arginine requirement is actually using arginine either from raw materials or from supplementary arginine and GAA is not really bringing extra benefits. For the starter animals, please be careful. GAA doesn't work properly in these uh, young animals, so you really need to care um, of them. Uh, with the extra arginine, you can, of course, increase the carotene levels in a regulated way. Uh, so if there is a beneficial effect on energy hemostasis in the muscle tissue, you will meet it by meeting your arginine requirement. Uh, last but not least, arginine um, has the potential 
the very nice effect because with our supplementary arginine you are flexible in how much arginine you would include into it. so depending on how much arginine comes from your raw materials you would decide how much l-arginine you would add on top and that's exactly the thing that you don't have with gaa because it has the minimum maximum inclusion rate so if you add 600 and you add whatever efficacy 77 or 50 percent for example that we are recommending to you so that's going to be dictating a level of arginine into your feed formula and means if the arginine coming from raw materials would be cheaper however this product would dictate itself into feed formulation so with arginine you don't have that issue so by that i would like to close this presentation thank you very much for your attention and if you have questions uh, around arginine on any of the topics that we discussed today please feel free to get uh, into our website or send email to us we would be happy to support you with that thank you very much and have a nice day